Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to our second ever Strix Haven premiere draft. Okay, opening up pretty bad rare inverted mastery. So it's got a lot of text. You can pay four to ramp yourself two lands and give yourself give your opponent one land on the battlefield. Um, or you can pay six to just give yourself two lands and two lands in the hand. We don't really want to ramp for six mana, and even at four mana, it's pretty costly, and then you have to give your opponent a, a land. It's just not really what you want to do. Um, professor, pretty good. Two one that learns, it's pretty good. Um, we've also got some decent cards in Blood Researcher and Needlethorn Drake. And not much else. I think I'm be honestly between Expel and Professor here. I think I'm going to go with Professor. But Expel is very good. Um, okay. So access tunnel is a land that can win you the game. Definitely something to consider. The rare is very good. Tempted by the auric, one blue blue blue, uh, to gain a menu value three permanent from the opponent. Um, it's a very good card. Only in the blue decks though. We've also got closing statement, which is a very good card in silver quill. Uh, and then we've got some other stuff here. So I am tempted by tempted uh, because it can go in either blue red or blue green. I think its power level is higher than the symbology, but I do like the professor. So here's definitely a decision point. We could take the tunnel, stay open. We could take tempted by the auric, the rare, and kind of st stay open in a way. Or we could go towards Silver Quill and commit to Silver Quill. Um, so I'd like to stay open just a little bit longer and uh, see where we end up here. Okay. So what is this? Whenever this attacks, put an instant from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. If you do, you can play two cards. For five mana. I mean, that seems okay. Uh, this card seems really good. It's basically anticipate, but you get to play one of the three cards this turn. Um, so it's kind of like draw two in a way. And then there's some other medium level stuff. Um, if we had taken that Silver Quill card, we would definitely be snapping up Mage's Hunter's Onslaught. But it's only my second draft. I'd like to try blue red if possible. Um, so I'll take it and see where it ends up. Yeah, this one seems pretty good. Um, interesting that a silver quill rare is making it through. Uh, this befuddler seems very good. The frost trickster seems great. So definitely still some great cards here. Um, gosh, I mean, we've got some good blue. I, I'm tempted to take one of the two blue cards, and then if we can pivot into blue-green, uh, th that'll be an option. Haven't seen any green really at all. I've seen a lot of Silver Quill stuff. Um, I feel kind of bad for passing up the other ones. But now I'm wondering if I shouldn't just take this card. Um, so I'm going to stay open. I'm not going to commit to blue yet, even though even though we kind of did in a way. I think one of the key, um, key decision-making processes in this set is going to be how long can I stay open before jumping into a... Um, color combo. 
Also like that this could be played in, in red-white if I need to. Um, red-white definitely doesn't seep open. It seems like we're trying to decide now between green-blue and white-black. There's a ton of green and blue in this pack. Um, the Pledge Mage is fine in Silver Quill, but I'd like to play Tempted. Um, so I'm going to go with the Cultivator. I do think Simone is very good, but um, I just like that the Cultivator is a 3-4 that puts a land out. It's just a very good rate, and uh, I'm happy to take it here. Okay, pick six. We're seeing Quintorius go late which is the basically the payoff for the lore hold college. Um, there's also a great lesson for Prismari or Quandrix. And then there's also Quandrix Pledge Mage. Um, I think I want to stay within these two cards because they could go in either blue, red, or blue, green if we ended up there. Out of them, I feel that I definitely want at least one summoning, but I kind of like that the Pledge Mage grows over time. I think that could be really good. So um, I'm going to take that here. And then we're seeing a lot of red now. We're seeing Fractal Summoning as a lesson, which is really only good once you start getting really late game but it's fine um, it's fine there's the letter which could help us fix and then there's also just this green two drop which is a good two drop um, yeah I think I'm gonna take the lesson here I guess the letter goes in any deck um, and now we just see another lesson so a little bit punished but Okay, one mana combat tricks are usually pretty good. Um, but again, I'd like to stay in as blue as I can. Uh, and I think Frost Trickster is a great card. So it's a Frost Lynx with flying. Uh, it's pretty good. Okay, our first pack comes around. Nobody's taken Verdant Mastery. I'm not surprised. Um... So, do we have to commit to green-blue here by taking the Flying Death Touch? I think it's a great card. Um, we could also just take Aerialist. It's a 4-mana, 3-1 Flying with Ward 2. Not super exciting, just trades with the Inklings and stuff, so... I think I'm on Needlethorn Drake. Hey, Access Tunnel came around. And another Drake. Interesting. I think Drake's really good. Um, I think Drake's really good. I'm going to take out the white cards. Probably we'll try to play Quandrix here and see if we can or can't. Um, but yeah, we'll take the Drake. Access Tunnel is good. It's definitely good. Um, it's definitely good. It's, it's just going to hurt us a lot on playing this. Um, it's going to hurt us on playing the Drakes. So I'm not going to uh, bend over backwards to play it. But if, if there wasn't a Drake in the pack, of course I would have taken it. Here, I think it's a commons. Uh, we might not play it if we don't end up splashing, but we're we might splash. Um, Eureka Moment, great card, great for Quandrix. It ramps us, it does everything we want, draws two cards. I do like this two drop a lot. Um, I think it's extremely good two drop, but uh, I just want to lock up the draw cards, I think. Okay, Simone Wheels. Uh, she was, this was um, pick five. So. Pretty happy to see an on-color legendary go through pick five and a frost trickster. So I think blue is definitely open. All right, and this amplimancer. We were debating on taking this. Okay, sweet. So we seem to be in the right color pair. Now coming back this direction, things might be different.
Okay. So this Damagoth's pretty good. We're not splashing black yet. Um, the Leyline Invocation is a 6 mana 6-6. Six, six, um, which can be okay. It's nothing too crazy, but it can be okay for sure. This is a 5 mana 5-5. Five, five, but we do have this little Magecraft theme. So it's an, it's a sorcery that also plays a creature. It does beat the 5-5. Five, five. And I think I'm going to take it over something like Opt or Pop Quiz, even though I do think these cards are fine. Um, just looking for a little bit more power is all. Um, okay. We've got Reflective Golem, which doesn't combo with anything that we have yet. We've got Bayou Groff, which could be very good, but we don't have any Sacrifice Fodder yet. Uh, I like Pest Summoning as a lesson to be able to grab, and I like the Campuses. And then Soothsayer Adept can be playable, but nothing too crazy. Um, so because this is a sorcery that makes creatures, it goes really well with our Pledge Mage. So I'm going to take that one here. Alright. What else are we getting? I think I think we're fighting a little bit on this direction, but I do think when we come around to pack 3, we'll have a lot of green and blue open. Um, Umbral Juke. <laughs> Love that. Uh, strategic planning. So it's basically anticipate. Um, reject could be okay. Counterspell. We're not really holding up mana though just yet. Um, I think we'll get a couple of quick, or a couple of cheap instants and sorceries uh, for our potential magecraft synergies. I think strategic planning while not incredible, is definitely a serviceable card. So let's pick that one up and keep moving. Uh, here's Karok Wrangler, another grower with Magecraft, um, which kind of seems like where we want to be. There is a Biomathematician, which is kind of goes well with uh, the Fractals. We only have the one Fractal, and it's already big enough. Um, and we've got the Lesson. But we don't have any learn yet, so that is something to keep in mind. And uh, we also got another Eureka moment, but I think I'm just going to take the uncommon. I think that if we're in the right space, either Biomathematician, Eureka moment, or Pest Summoning, we wheel. One of the three should definitely wheel. Okay, we've got Weather the Storm, gain three life with Storm. Yeah, that's pretty medium. Unless we have a sh crap load of Magecraft, which we are getting uh, some. <laughs> we are getting some, but um, nothing too crazy. So, Elemental Summoning, Quandrix Pledge Mage again. I think we'll go with the Pledge Mage, and then if that Storm card wheels, I might take it. but probably only if it wheels. Um, we've got a decent amount going on at 2. We kind of need some more beef in the deck. So if we're looking for beef, I think Pledge Mage is definitely there. Um, Scurred Colony. Yeah, it's a 2-2 two -two reach for 2, and then grows if you have 8 lands to a 4-4, four -four, but... I kind of want just a big thing, and we can play this, it's double green, so I think I'll take it, and hopefully these mathematicians wheel around. Okay, um, yeah, another Wrangler. So we're kind of doing the Magecraft thing. There's a bunch of Eureka moments maybe coming around, otherwise I would take this second. But uh, I'm kind of liking this this Wrangler, I mean, it's it's not good, it's 5-mana it's 3-3, three three, but... Um, if we can draw out the game, it certainly gets a lot better. Snakeskin Veil, also worth mentioning, as a decent card. 
Um, but I just kind of want to get more stuff uh, at five. Okay, so here's a pick between Simone and Quandrix Campus. Pretty tough pick because Campus is very, very good when you're running out of cards. You can scry. Now this is also good. You can draw, but this upgrades a land and this upgrades a two drop. We already have one. We're going to just, I think, upgrade the land um, for now and then we might decide later that um, we might decide later that we want it. Okay, so Symmetry Sage, Magecraft whenever you cast, target creature has base power 2 until end of turn. Uh, yeah, it can buff the Drakes, but all in all, I don't think it's really where we want to be. Um, I do kind of just like this 5-5 this five five for 5, you know, I'm going to play pretty much any number of of 5-5s five for 5 here. Alright, um, two mana looter or an off-color campus. Um, I'll kind of hedge with the off-color campus just in case we open a super, super good uh, card we could splash, but don't have very high hopes for that. Um, we could take a 2-4 for 3, but I think the flyer is just a little bit better. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely in the right zone. I think we just want a little more card draw. I'm going to take Eureka Moment over the Mathematician, just because we're not creating these very many fractals. Um, really not creating many at all. So, yeah. Looks like the bloom might have been the most open, um, but all in all, I'm not for the top two cards. What is that? Scry two draw a card, kind of interesting. Interesting. Okay, Quandrix command an on color rare for our Quandrix deck. Um, pretty much an easy pick here. I don't think it's worth mentioning anything else. Um, this card seems like a trap to me. If I already have a bunch of cards out, creatures out with different power level, I'm, I'm probably doing pretty good. Um, and if I don't have any creatures, this is a draw zero, so just the floor on this card is absolutely worthless, and the ceiling is not super high. Um, cultivate, worth mentioning, um, not really. Key. Quandrix Command is just is just the easiest pick here. Easiest potential pick you could ever have. Uh, definitely happy with it. Okay, so Rutha on the splash. Nah. Mentor's Guidance. Yeah, this seems like what we want to do. Uh, so it's Scry 1, draw 1 for 3, which is not very good. But if we have any of those, it copies itself. So it's three mana, scry two, draw two. Um, if we have any sort of wizard or druid or anything like that, and we have tons of them, it's two mage crafts for our pledge mages and our wranglers. So definitely an exciting pick here. Super happy to grab it. Okay. Mortality Spear, great card. We're very lacking on removal, like extremely lacking. But I don't think I have any way to splash black. Um, Field Trip's a great learn card for us. That could maybe give us access to some colorless learn removal. So just not super high on the conjuration. Honestly, I think I, I might take Mortality Spear here, but hopefully it wheels. Uh, okay, so 2-3 Vigilance. Do we have any ways to gain life? I think these guys gain life when I Magecraft, but other than that, I'm probably not going to be at 25 or more. Um... 
Charge through seems pretty good. Might just want another Pledge Mage, though. I mean, those things will start to get out of hand if I can get a lot of them. Um, and then I also really like this 2-drop a lot. I really, really like it. Um, so this is tough. I mean, I already have two Pledge Mages, but I think, I think we're just going to take a third one here. Okay, so Witherbloom Campus came around. I'm um, going to snap this one up just because we've already hit our playables, and if we get uh, some sort of removal spell we can splash, I'm all in. So, Aether Helix, yeah, it, it does some things sometimes. Um, nothing super crazy, but could be okay. I, I still think this this befuddler is just really good. Um, so I'm gonna take this one, I think. Could have taken the other campus, but we're on pack three. I don't know if anything's gonna wheel. Hey, we got our apprentice for our deck. Goes well with Magecraft, which we're already doing, so seems like an easy pick. We'll just move on. We're kind of holding up the draft a little bit. Um. Yeah, a first fight spell, our first removal spell. Definitely something that I want. Okay. Um, again, I don't think golden ratio is where you want to be. I think that pop quiz isn't either, but... Maybe we end up playing it if we have some good lessons, although I don't think we do. Um, we could splash Elemental Masterpiece off Commons and Campus. But probably won't. Um, take the rare. Uh, right. Arcane Subtraction could be okay. But Charge Through could be okay. I mean, it's a cantrip. Uh, I saw this card go around, Snow Day. Not too sure about it. I don't know if six mana is really where I want to be for a sleep type effect. But... It does draw two cards. I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it could be okay. Aether Helix came around. That's awesome. This seems pretty medium. All right. So, all in all, pretty happy. I think Quandrix was probably the best possible seat um, we could have had. Maybe Witherbloom could have been a little better, uh, just because we don't have like any removal spells. But um, let's go ahead and cut the cuttable cards and then we'll come back and add them in if we need more. We've got plenty of creatures. So maybe we could cut the weakest to drop. Um, Fostrixers are good. This card's pretty good. Uh, pest summoning. Yep. Um, I kind of want to leave uh, basic Conjuration and Fractal Summoning as my lessons. Um, I th think we are learning once. Yeah, Field Trip learns us once. <sighs> Is this card even good? What are we actually ramping to on three? Got four or five drops. I don't know. I don't really know. I, th I think it just might be not good enough. Um, Quandrix Command is excellent. Pledge Mage. Aerialists. I could cut for sure. Um, Tempted is great. Beast cards are awesome. I like these. Aether Helix could go, but. Being able to balance.
balance tokens in this set is actually pretty key. There's a lot of tokens going around. I think Snow Day is pretty medium, not super high on it. Um, so I think 17 lands. I'll play the campus um, just as a tapped green that can scry. Do we want 17 lands? We're not really doing... I guess we're drawing, we're drawing, we're drawing, we're okay. We, we can we can do a lot of stuff with the mana that we will have. Uh, we don't have that many payoffs for having eight lands, but it is a theme. I think I took out the colony. I think that might have been one of the only real ones that had that. Um, so still at 16 creatures. Don't really want to cut any more non-creatures because we are doing the Magecraft thing with three of these guys. So our curve's pretty heavy on two and three. Um, so let's cut one two drop, one three drop. What's the worst two drop? I think Amplomancer. Like, yeah, you can spend five mana to make it a four four, but I'm not really putting any buffs on it or any counters, or anything like that. Now, if we get 10 mana, it's an 8-8. Eight eight. <laughs> Is that really worth keeping around? Not sure. Um, what about these drakes? I mean, yeah, they can block and kill anything. They have flying death touch. But if we're going to end up just trading for an inkling, I don't know. I guess they do help us get to the late game. Definitely not cutting any of my Quandrix cards, so let's cut the Mancer. Uh, let's cut the Mancer, although I think it still could be fine. Um, we're not learning, so we want to play the Pest Summoning main deck. We're definitely going to school and not learning anything, but I think we're happy with that. Alright, so is three pledge mages too many? Um, it gives us a higher chance of having one turn three, which is where it shines. But it's also a higher chance of drawing one late game, which it, where it doesn't shine really at all. Whereas Frost Trickster, good in the early game, good in the late game. Less snowbally, for sure, less snowbally. But I think 14 creatures still seems fine. Um, we are drawing a lot of cards. We're drawing a lot of cards. Maybe we just don't need the extra island because we're going to be drawing so many cards. We'll just play 16. Um, our curve basically ends at 5, yeah, yeah we have 1, 6, but we're easily, you know, this card ramps us to 6 on the next turn, um, this card ramps us to 6 on the next turn, so just getting to 4 is going to be fine for us, I think. So, let's go with this. Is it bugging out again? It's bugging out again. Okay, you know, sometimes when they first make a set, these kind of things happen. <laughs> so, um, let's try to hit done. Okay. Cool. Alright, seems to be working again. Um, do we have a Simic? Yeah, Cure is Simic, and so is, uh, Whatever her name is. I can't even remember her name. If I can't remember her name, I, I don't really deserve to play her, do I? But <laughs> it's too late. Alright, let's let Zimone lead us to victory here. Alright. So that was the draft and deck building portion. If you're sticking around for the games, you probably like limited content. 
If you like Magic Limited content, makes sense to me. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it coming to you. Alright? Thanks. So, we've got a keep, opponent mulliganed. We're going to go turn one campus, turn two drake, maybe turn two apprentice. What does this do? Anticipates for a land. That could be good. Alright, we're going to be able to tempt the auric as well, so this draw is looking sweet. Opponent's got a 0 4 defender. So we're definitely not getting in with the Apprentice. I think we're going to go with the Death Toucher. Doesn't have reach, so only 20 more turns to go. <laughs> that is a problem. That is a problem. He's just got a two card combo on turn three. That is a problem that we need to deal with. Or maybe, <laughs> or maybe we just let him build it up, and then when we need to, we'll take it. <laughs> That's so devilish. I love it. I love it. All right. So, is Quandrix Command even good? <laughs> it lets us bounce and put counters and counter artifact or enchantment and shuffle cards from our graveyard. That's kind of whack. I think counters and bounce at instant speed is what it's probably going to be. Do we want to do that here? Not really. Like I said, we kind of want to let them grow the researcher again. So let's, I guess if we keep this back, will he be scared to attack? I don't think so. I, uh, and I'm not going to block anyway. I kind of want him to, to put everything on this card, like gain a bunch of life this turn, opponent. Please, go ahead. Gain this life. Yeah, you got it. Do another one. Do another one. Whoa! Sack a green creature, put any green creature from your library out. That seems pretty good. A mythic archive card, huh? Alright. You go, you, you do it, opponent. You get it. You get that big thing. Really? Really? You could have got any card out of your deck. You got a 3-2? That's the best you got? Is that really the best you got? I mean, it's just pathetic. He did it just for the counter on this? Opponent. I am so sorry. But, uh... That's mine now. It's mine now. I think I'm fine trading the apprentice. He doesn't even want to. Oh baby. Oh baby. Yep. You were gonna gain so much. Oh my gosh. He just gives up. I'm so sorry opponent. Come on, you didn't have to give up. Oh no. Oh no. Well, I'm glad we took that pick too. Um, definitely just won us the game there. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. That just, uh, I'm so sorry. Man, we got it again in our hand, although we need another island to get there, but um, we got one, two, three, four, we've got four lands, like, uh, yeah, I'd rather have an island, but 
this hand is definitely keepable. In fact, it's not just keepable. It's a great hand. Happy to have it. What is this? 2-1, two, 2-2 two, two Vigilance. Whenever it attacks, it gains flying or anything that anything else has. Interesting. Seems pretty good. Hey, we got our other island. So, with this out, if we steal it, it's a 2-2 two, two Death Touch Flying Vigilance? Okay. Um, I don't need to block it. Okay, so we could get the Pledge Mage out now, and then next turn, if we tempt, we get a counter, which seems like the plan. We kind of told opponent that we're not blocking, so let's go ahead and keep not blocking for now. Okay, so now it's got flying. Interesting. Opponent's playing this card, so they've got a Mardu deck with, with both red and black, which is pretty sweet. But, um... It'd be a shame if somebody took that nice three drop from you that you went out of your way to splash and everything. Be a huge shame, huh? Ah, what a shame. What a shame. <laughs> oh man, Tempted by the Auric. Definitely great rare. I think you should play it. If you're in blue, you should play it. Uh, even though it has three blue, you should play it. It's, it's that good. Oh! Yeah, sure. Um, don't mind if I do. So this searches for a basic land, but then it puts it on top. So he's not going to draw any gas, he's just going to draw a swamp. That's why I'm kind of like a bit low on that card, to be completely honest. Um, so Frost Trickster here. Probably tap down the guide so he's forced to chump block with the orator, but opponent's seen enough. I mean <laughs> They've all seen enough. <laughs> turn four, tempted, turn five, concede. Game three. Hopefully it's just as winning as the other two games have been. Whew, this is tough. This is tough. So we need one land to get to a card draw. If we get one land, we can do Pledge Mage into Guidance, which copies this becomes a 4-4. Four four. Now that's if. We only have two draws to get that land. If we don't get that land, we're not doing anything. This is really tough because, I mean, if we can get that one land, we're set. If we don't get it, we basically lose the game. Um, I think the disciplined Pro Tour play here might beat a mulligan, but we've been running hot so far, we are gonna be greedy and keep it, and we're gonna just draw a land next turn, and everything will be okay. Yep, next turn, everything will be okay. See? What did I tell you? And you were worried. <laughs> One turn without a land drop? I mean, that's rookie numbers. Come on. I wouldn't have conceded until it was at least four turns.
So we could have waited, but because we didn't draw the land, we just have to do it. Triggers to choose resolution order. Yes, I would like the Magecraft to go first. Copy it. Boom, boom, boom. Don't really need another one of those. Like I said, don't really need another one of those. Really could have used a land here. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. I can't block because he can do something to make this a 4-4. Um, need to discard one card. Maybe Invocation? Although... I don't know, Karlak Kerl Wrangler seems pretty bad now that he's already got one going. S and I'm pretty far off the lands. I think I'm gonna keep the Invocation just for the Pledge Mage. But I'm gonna ditch the Karak. Because I only have three lands, I mean... There's no guarantee that I'm gonna get a fourth one this turn either. Uh, if we don't, thankfully we have Trickster, or Needle Thorn Drake, or Simone. Um, so the, the draws were still good for us, but it definitely hurts to not get a land. Um, it hurts, but what you can't do... Ouch. You can't let yourself get discouraged, okay? You just have to trust in your deck. We built a good deck. The odds are in our favor to draw lands. We will draw them. It's just going to take a little time. So, it's just going to take a little time. Okay? It's all good. It's all good. Uh, when we get that land, we're going to double spell our two drops. Um, so, if I have the choice between playing Drake and Trickster, I think I'm going to play Trickster. Now, it doesn't block very well. But here's here's what's going to happen. I either play Trickster, tap Wrangler, and have this board facing me. Or I can play Needlethorn Drake and have this board facing me, block one, and then I'm still taking the same amount of damage. Um, if he has removal spell, Frost Trickster is clearly superior. Okay, this Overgrown Arch, I think, is just really good in any green deck. Like, I, I saw it go around through the draft, and I was kind of like, eh, it's a Witherbloom card, right? Dude, this is... Thi if I had this out, I mean, I wouldn't be scared at all. I would have just now taken damage. Ah, man. So. It hurts. You know, opponent is not running out of gas. It hurts. But, he just, like we said, we just planned for that. Opponent might not have removal now. Um, opponent might not have removal now. So, if opponent does have removal, um, we want to play probably... this to ramp five out and then hopefully we could go turn six eureka simone we can actually do turn five eureka simone if we draw a land if we draw two lands god this is tough this is tough um I guess Invocation would be really good. This blocks the Professor. And ramps us. So I'm going to do it. Uh, it also might make it so they don't attack with the Pest. Um, so I think this saves the most life. And it ramps us. That's why I played it. If they have a removal spell... We should have played Zimone and, and Drake. 
Um, you know, if they had a removal spell, we should have played Zimone and Drake, but, you know, they, they've they got to be out of removal at this point. I mean, although I just played, there was a ton of black removal. Okay, so, yeah, it's over. It's over. If we had Zimone out, we would still be chump blocking, taking seven. Um, and then even with six mana, I don't think we could have beaten that. So, it's all good. It's all good. We still gave him a run for his money, and we were uh, mana screwed. Uh, so, our deck is strong. And um, we kept a two lander, so so the only person we can blame is ourselves uh, for having a little bit of bad luck combined with a, a bad choice uh, at the beginning. This is a similar choice. Yeah, we have three lands, but now we don't have an island. A chance of drawing an island in our deck is... 8 out of 33, which is over 25%. Sorry, just about 25%. Um, just under. So, in four turns, you know, hell, in three turns, we should have a decent chance of drawing it. And then every turn after that, the chance gets higher and higher and higher, um, statistically. Is this hand good enough if we only draw forests? I mean, it plays a 2-2 two, two on 3 and a 3-3 three, three on 5. So I think, ironically... Because the whole point of not mulliganing is we don't know exactly what we'll get. We know we're going to have to put one card back. So if we don't just get like a really good hand, um, you know, if we also get a similar land decision, then we're just down a card. Um, so I think, again, I'm only keeping it because we have a turn three play and we're on the play. Uh, we're probably less likely to get run over. And the odds of drawing an island are high. Um, if we were playing some sort of tricolor deck, then I would change my opinion. Here we go. Opponent keeps up too. Opponent keeps up too. What do we want to do? We could play into the counter spell. He could have nothing. He could have a counter. Um, what happens? I don't think there's a counter pay one besides mana tithe. Um, what happens to us if he counters uh, our Pledge Mage? Well, next turn, I guess we play Zimone, right? Um, Zimone, the turn after that, can draw cards on our own. So, it's not the end of the world. And I'd like to be as man efficient as possible. So I'm gonna play it. Opponent didn't have anything. <laughs> so <laughs> we just playing <laughs> Um we're just kinda zoning ourselves here. Uh but it's all good. Mind zoning ourselves. Alright. What is this? When he gets eight or more lands, this is a um, kind of a muscular threat. Otherwise, it's just a 2-3. 
I'd like to be mana efficient. I'd like to play Devouring Tendrils this turn. But is it really worth playing it on the runner? It's one of our only removal spells. It does, uh... it does it's a fight spell so it's good with drake but it, i like that it buffs our pledge mage and it's mana efficient and i kind of just want to beat up on this guy um and be aggressive so i'm gonna do that and then simone or quandrix probably i mean Sorry, Simone or Neothorn Drake. I think we're not blocking anything anytime soon. Uh, Simone is just an engine. Maybe they'll kill her over the Drake. If they have some sort of removal. Um, and then next turn, Mentor's Guidance into an island can play Drake. Nice. So Mentor's Guidance is going to push uh, the Pledge Mage out of range, which is going to be pretty sweet here. Uh, Pest Summoning will do it too, but there's no need to do that. So this is a sorcery. This is also a sorcery. Okay. If it was an instant, we could try to blow out, but... Uh, Yeah, I'll take that. Wait, I don't have three islands, do I? I don't have three islands. Opponents already at five mana. I don't think I should take it. I think it's probably not a discipline take. Of course, now I get the islands, but uh, I still think it was the right decision. I don't really need the sixth land just yet. I know Zimone does a thing. But it's tapped. So. There we go. We got it anyway. Boom. And. I could ramp here. But I think just playing the Drake is going to be good here. Hit him for 5. Bonus down to 12. And now the Drake can actually start chipping in. I mean, it could have this whole time. I don't know. I don't know. We're just kind of having fun with it. Overthinking ourselves. Uh, pretty happy with, with our deck at this point. We drew the island that we needed. Life is good. Still stumbling a little bit on lands, but you know what? That's what we get for playing uh, 16 instead of 17. Um, definitely, maybe we could go back and add a land if we wanted. If we wanted to. So I think we went first, and opponent has more lands than us is never a good thing. <laughs> well, I guess he has another land from this guy. I don't know if he put two out this turn or not. He really can't decide if he wants to attack. Okay. So we want to get the Wrangler out before we start mage crafting again. I'm going to attack with both here. Uh, if opponent has the flashy minus one guy, I don't know, 
I still kill something, right? Um, cool. Eureka moment. I'll pretend like I thought about countering it. Next to blockers. It's Simone holding up, so I guess. <sighs> Put target creature into its owner's library second from the top. Interesting. I'm not too happy about that opponent. Not too happy about that at all. Okay. That was very rude. Very disrespectful. Let's just go. Let's go ramping. Ramping and wrangling. Next turn, Wranglers a 4-4, four four, and we're swinging in. And uh, otherwise, only 11, tor oh, only 11 more turns to go for the Drake. Alright. Opponent says, now's my chance. I'm going to play a thing and then time warp. So, we really have to be careful about tapping out. Because opponent can double damage us at any moment. Alright. Now we've got a game. Why can't I cast Aether Helix? Because I need a permanent in my graveyard? Is that why? <sighs> that really sucks, huh? Well, that's okay. Let's, um, let's draw a card. Before we run out of time here. Hey, we knew what that card was. Definitely not attack. So, here we'll block with Drake, hopefully. And then next turn, Aether Helix it back. And bounce the token. We're definitely Aether Helixing the token. Honestly, I was debating, like, attacking with Simone just to have them block it so that we could bounce the token because that thing is a serious threat. At this point, I'm, uh, if they kill Drake, I'm blocking with anything. Um, time Warp is an extremely scary card. Okay. Yep. So they have removal for it. And they're attacking in. Well... I'm gonna go. F he has the freaking time warp too. Oh my gosh. So, what do we do here? Do we. We can't just take 16. Um, do we go for the double block on Serpent Guy? If he has something, lose both creatures, take three, and then take three, eight, then take eight. That seems terrible. If we, if we do, it's the same thing either way. If he has something and we double block the cultivator, then, um, We should have gone for the double block on the cultivator, I guess. Oh, oh okay. Alright. You think you're cool? You, th you think you got it? He opponent's like, yep. I've got it now. Guess what? Guess what? You don't got it.
You don't got it. I got it. So, what do we want back? Do we think opponent has some other one of these? Also good to know. I'll take these very highly now. Thanks. I honestly hadn't read them yet. It's pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. Alright. I think the defensive play would be to take the Drake. But guess what? <laughs> we aren't being defensive. We are not being defensive. In fact, we are going to slap him. I'm going to slap him for one because I'm not going to block with some mom. Okay, I don't care if you time warp me. Go ahead. You got another one of these? He probably does. Go ahead, bro. Do it. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. You can't double it twice, though. No, you don't even double it. What you got? Oh my god. No. No! <laughs> He's got it all. He's got it all. This is this is hard. This is a really hard, really hard game. Oh my gosh, you're too late. Too late, we just have to do it. Put a counter on... No, I want it on you. Good job. Alright, again, Zamon isn't doing anything useful. This one damage might actually matter. And late game, she's just gonna win us the game, so. Who am I, what am I talking? It is late game. Yep. I will... Opponent is at 10. So I know the game, opponent. I'm just going to jump. Yeah, do you have something? Some instant speed trample? Is that a thing? Because we know he has time warp. You know? Hey, this is time warp in his hand. He, uh... He put it on top of his library with this. What? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Is this... Did he do it wrong? What the hell happened? I, I don't I don't know what's going on. I honestly don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm just being stupid. Tell me in the comments. Am I, am I being? I'm probably just being stupid, but. Um, sure. Let's just play all our things. Probably. Honestly? I don't know whether to tap the Amplomancer or the Assistant. Uh, 
Honestly, the Amplomancer is more annoying. Because he has nothing else to spend the mana on. He can threaten to uh, make it an 88, basically. Alright, so the question is, do I want to scry on upkeep? Probably not, because I could just draw with Simone. In fact, she'll draw two. Do I want to attack? Not right now, because I'm honestly still kind of spooked about freaking Time Warp. Like, I don't understand. Did he not? Did he choose not to do it? Then why isn't it in his graveyard? Why is this Pledge Mage? Did he shuffle? Oh my gosh. He shuffled. <laughs> he shuffled it. I wasn't even paying attention. That must feel so bad. That must feel awful. Yeah, no, totally. I'll block. Where did it go? It's just in the middle of his... He, so he has it in his library somewhere. Oh my gosh. That, this is crazy. This is a crazy game. Cool. Okay. I mean, yeah. 5-mana five 5-5. Five five. Seems good. I have 8 mana. So I kind of want to just hit a land off this. I'm greedy. We're gonna live by the greed, die by the greed. Okay. Let's just play this thing. Guarantee some ramp here. We could have, we could have Eureka'd. Um, I think we're fine on board, but I, I feel a little better if we just add one more thing. Yeah, we're totally taking action. What kind of question is that? Throw me a big blue guy out there. Alright. We kind of tapped out pre-combat, which is kind of a noob move, because we could have considered attacking here. I think if we, you know, it's bad if he double blocks us and we don't have anything, so I'm just not going to do it. I just want to be safe, because this card could be Time Warp. Any of these cards could. He's got 16 left. We've got 18 left. Although that's just <laughs> that's about to change. Yeah. Yeah, this card is annoying, man. It's an 8-8. Eight eight if he wants it to be. Otherwise, it's a 4-4 four four if he wants it to be. Um, I'm just going to put off the decision for now. Yeah, that's a good one. Alright, we can win this. We can win this mir this mirror match here. Uh, for sure. I think... This is an instant. This is an instant. Opponent gives, gives up. We did it. I think we still definitely had a game there. He didn't know we had gas. Like, we could have just had lands. Okay. It's a little, a little premature. A little premature. It was a good game, though. Much respect to my Quandrix opponent. Let's move on to the next one. It was a long game. Alright, 3-1. 3-1. Alright, this is too way too greedy for me. Don't don't keep these, I think. Y you can't play anything if, if our land goes wrong. It's just too greedy. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Amazing. Which two drops do we want to keep? You've got your buddy, Froggy. And you've got Spiky Boy. I think, uh... Froggy is better later. I don't know if we have a shuffle effect or not. But, uh... I'm sorry, Froggy. 
I'd rather play Needlethorn Drake. On two, baby. We could we could have punished a one drop. But how many of those do you see in most games? I don't know, because this is my only my second time drafting this set. So far it's been pretty good. We were seven one on our first draft. Of course we are in silver uh, and low gold, but you know, I'm sure a lot of returning players are in that um, bracket as well. Uh, anyway, we f pack one, pick one, silver quill, uh, elder dragon, and uh, just kind of got silver quill from there. It was pretty open and um, had tons of removal and great creatures and good synergy. Uh, it's on YouTube. Check it out. Okay. Didn't draw the fourth land. It's all good. It's all good. We're just setting up for a major uh, Eureka moment, if you know what I mean. Although this Flame Painter is a super scary card, and he discarded the frickin' Creative Outburst. This is just... Is this is unbeatable? I mean... If he has a pump spell... We're freaking dead. It's better than the 1-1. The one one. <sighs> this is just what? 5 damage? It does exile it afterwards. So... Maybe we could survive. Um, I definitely don't think that I block it, though, because any sort of pump spell is just going to make it gas. God, but then he's just getting the free freaking thing. Ugh. All right. You know what? No, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. Go ahead and do your thing. Yep. He, so he he kills my pledge mage and he draws one card. For now. Um, if we draw the fight spell, we're gonna be, you know, pinging it. Uh, you know, any sort of buff spell would have just made it way too good. He should have still played it there for the damage. Gosh. That's not what we need. It's really not what we need. Alright. So. We're probably. We're probably dead here. Um, it's been real. It's been really real. He doesn't have any spells in the graveyard yet. So, not sure what he's doing with all that mana. Alright, great. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. But we can't block with this thing, so we might as well attack with it. If he has some, like, serpentine fucking thing. Okay. Ah, that's a good one. So you can cast that and then double it. Yeah, it's basically game, right? Like, what can I do at this point? What can I even do at this point? I think this is one of the best rares in the format, honestly. So he had that learn card, most definitely. Um, so if we had tried to double block, I mean, we would have, uh, 
We wouldn't have gotten anywhere. We would have still lost a creature. He would have learned twice. Um, so it basically would have been the same. Uh, at this point, all we can do really is cultivate. We'll definitely take action. And, uh, we have three islands for the thing, so... But maybe we should have got a fourth island. Not sure. Probably. This is, we, we only really need two forests. Um, so yeah. Should have done that, but... We're a little sad, so we're not thinking of trade at this point. Yep. Exactly as she should. Um, I mean... He doesn't have a spell in the yard right now. But... that plus three it'll kill me so go ahead and show it to me there it is so now this card is sick like okay watch and the infuriate so yeah it has trample and it has double strike and trample with infuriate so he's got the gas for it Sorry, trample from uh, from the study. So then he gets to cast it again. This card did it ended up doing like eleven damage on its own or whatever, fourteen damage on its own. Pretty sick. Pretty sick, honestly. So. We've been missing our lands. It's true. We've missed them every game that we've lost, and we missed them in a game that we won. Do we just we just play seventeen, and we take out whatever card has been the worst for us? Um, I feel like it might be the Wrangler. Gosh, it just it kind of sucks to draw that card. Um. I haven't been too excited with either of these, to be honest. But maybe that's because we're we're low on lands, right? <laughs> so, um, I usually try not to gut. Like, I usually try to not let a couple games decide how I feel about what I built. You know. I feel like I think I can cut the campus because we're not actually um, we want this other island for this and uh, we're not actually ever activating these because we have so much other stuff to do <sighs> I really think 16 is the right place to be I really do so, again, I'm not going to let, you know, three games uh, shake my resolve. I'm not going to let it. Great hand. Great hand on the play. I love it. We're going to go Magecraft trigger, Magecraft trigger into Magecraft. Twice. This seems good. This seems like where we want to be. We're going to draw a bunch of lands. You know? Alright. What you got? What you got? You're going to attack with a 3-3? Go ahead. Oh. Opponents in Teamer. I think this is one of the um, most viable tricolors, by the way. Teamer. Alright. I think we 
we just blow them out here? Honestly, I'm just going to go big. I'm just going to go big. He only got one red. So, if we Quandrix command, we're going to return encounters. We are going to return Drake. We're going to put counters on Ephrenus. We are going to draw an island off the top of our deck. And then we put a couple cards on the bottom. Whatever. I feel like I'm gonna trade for this Drake. I don't have much else in my deck that deals with that, besides stealing it. In the end, these are just cards that I put counters on, right? You know, I had a good turn with it, and uh, they've run their course, you know? While I can, I'm just going to get the last value. It's okay that I'm not gaining life. I'm not under any pressure. Don't need any lands. Okay, that Befuddler is going to actually freaking own the opponent here. Oh my god. This is going to be sick. This is going to be nuts. This is why the Befuddler is good. I feel like the Befuddler versus the Drake. That's going to be a theme this set. Dude. Froggy. Get him, Froggy. Get him, Froggy. got him. Good job, Froggy. Good job. You know what? This card, I was thinking about cutting it for a land. I was thinking about it, and I'm so glad that I didn't. Sure. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, man. This game is awesome. This set is awesome. I I'm a huge fan. It's been really fun. All right, Let's swing in, play our growth creature, play our engine, and we'll get the tapped land out of the way. We're going to have eight lands. We're going to make an 8-8. Eight eight. Maybe a 7-7 seven seven is good enough, huh? So... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We could draw a card and summoning. Summoning makes this better. And gives us one more Magecraft off of this. I don't think we need any more, to be honest. I'm willing to trade Pledge Mages. And, um, yeah. Nice. Gets me one more land. Um, I can do that on his turn. Attack. Uh, well, 
don't have to attack with that. I don't think opponent can just take four. But they're probably gonna, now that they have this big scary thing. If they don't have a way to deal with it. out taps out the draw cards and draw lands okay if he puts out a green plays a three drop here hopefully yeah doesn't consider attacking as he shouldn't Simone, while I still have her, I don't, like I said, I don't need to gain life, I don't really necessarily need a 5-5 five five right now, um, let's see what we get, shall we, I could just steal, you know, here we go, got two of those in the deck, GG, Great win, Ga great game, for sure. Definitely uh, styled a little bit on our opponent there, uh, as this deck should. That played perfectly well, we got just as many lands as we needed. Um, uh, you know, our guy definitely helped with that. Our guy definitely helped with that. Seems good. We're on the draw, we only need one land. And, uh, you know. I was gonna say we either draw lands or we probably draw some early threats. Because we have a lot of two drops. So. Main deck environmental sciences. As a environmental science major, I approve. Drake or Simone? Drake or Simone? Well, next turn we're not really going to use 4 mana like that anyway. So let's go with Drake. So, okay. I knew this was going to happen. I knew we were going to stumble a little bit. Okay. Yeah. We stumble a little bit, but it's just giving us a chance to play our our other pledge mage. Um, no thanks. Just giving us a chance to play our other pledge mage and um, Eureka moment. Them both. See. Okay, four mana, unfortunately. Whenever you gain life, you may pay one. If you do, put a counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trample until end of troll. Until end of turn. That sounds crazy. Um. Yeah. That sounds really good for him. Unfortunately, nothing has changed for us. So, Neilthorn Drake, maybe you should stay back now. Now this Amplomancer is annoying. Maybe I should have traded off for it. Okay, plays Overgrown Arch in the main phase. Like a true gamer. Well, I was just thinking that maybe I should have traded for it. God, he's gonna gain one life every freaking turn. 
Alright, you know what? At this point, I'm, I'm willing to block it. I'm willing to block it a lot. <sighs> it's just heartbreaking. Come on. Like, I really believed in the deck. I really did. And this is how it repays me. You know? Like, it's really, it really hurts. It really hurts. I'm going to have to steal an overgrown arch. Or else it's just going to get out of control. And if I do, he can just play two and sack it and learn. Oh my god. This is crazy. This is just crazy. Okay, but if I do that, he can't gain the life and do the counters. I have six. Even if I had seven, I couldn't... Yeah. <sighs> so, like... could guarantee that I get it if I attack with uh, Pledge Mage. No, that's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. I'm just gonna get rid of it. I can't. It can't use it on either of these two because they cost four and it's only uh, three or less. Like, somehow he's teamer, but all of his payoffs are, like, this is a freaking uh, wind, wind, wither bloom card. And yeah, he just got unconditional removal. Oh my gosh. We are definitely hurt in this game. Do we want to trade off Pledge Mage? Yeah, totally. I think it's, I think it's definitely worth it. Access and we'll trade off with either of these two. So, all right. I, I I did know about that, so maybe I should have thought about that. Just take eight. It's fine. All right. That is that is good. Um, that is really good. I wish we had one more mana. Just one. So all in all, if we survive this, I will add another land. <laughs> um, Pest summoning isn't that great because everything gains trample. So in that case, I kind of just want my big boy. Probably don't attack. That seems greedy. Hopefully he just doesn't have any other ways to gain la life. Like, that's a good hope. I guess. Yeah, if I even if I had waited till the next turn. He could have gained life with these, and they would have been a lot stronger. I'll block one each. I guess I should have put the 5-5 five five on the, the one that he wants to pump the least, because that's the 5-5 five five is the one creature that I want the most. He decides he wants this one instead. Fair enough, that's the one that gives everything trample. Does he have another for Lizette? I 
hell we still killed it? Oh, because it was just a straight up fight. Okay. <laughs> There's some silver lining. Uh, now they don't have trample, actually. So. listening to me. You're still making fun of me. I appreciate it. I really do. Let's just hope this is enough. I mean, this is not that greedy. Ugh, I don't have it. I'm land screwed. As I have been. Well, at least his copies. Let's put counters on the big guy. That makes the most sense to me. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. We're at three life, so no attacks. So this is a land. Good to know. He could have pretended. Could have just done me the courtesy of pretending, you know? Um left. Could Magecraft one more time. I don't really see the point though. Quandrix Command is an instant speed blowout, so I'm gonna keep it back. I'm gonna play this. I could go for fast summoning. Um, but some sort of like crush the weak type effect would kill me. Trample would kill me as well. It's gonna be pretty hard to beat Quandrix Command with one card. So, okay, <laughs> two cards. I could have bounced the Wrangler in response. It's fine, though. Is this a land? What is the last card that he has? I think it's a land. Or it's just something that wasn't good yet? Not sure what that would be. Um. Gosh, do we Quandrix Command? 
He didn't attack or do anything. I kind of want to keep it up. Like, it's pretty good. It's pretty good to keep up. basically as good as it gets, right? Do I just get greedy and make this bigger? Like... Do I... I'm gonna attack again. It's the only way to win. If he lets himself get down to seven, like, or if he triple blocks. Like, okay. I wanna kill this thing, because I'm scared of it. So does Quandra's command beat them? It's gonna put two counters. Yeah, it freaking does. Because of the Magecraft, baby. Because of the Magecraft, baby. Absolutely obliterated nice that was a great game turned it around at three life blew the opponent out with our rare Five and two. I said I was gonna change the lands. I said if we win this game somehow I will change the lands and then that gave me more lands, so it's just asking for more lands and I have to oblige. Um gonna give it a forest. because uh, that's what I was weak on that game. But I don't know if I'm gonna cut the befuddler for it. It pretty much hosed this card. Um Honestly, pest summoning was was pretty hard to justify. Do the trample. Um, this is tough. This is really tough. Cause cause Karak Wrangler was kind of the way that we were coming back from that. We played really well that game. I do think Pledge Mage is a lot better at kind of what it does, and we do already have three of those. This Pledge Mage has also never been cast. Um, and when it has, it was just kind of okay. Uh, this is tough. I think I'm going to cut a Wrangler. Yeah, okay. You know, of course this game we're going to flood really hard because we just cut our 5 drop and uh, put a land in. Like, yeah, I guess that game got there with 16, right? This is tough, but uh, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. I know I only have one life left, but we'll see. I think this deck does pretty well, honestly, if it gets flooded out. Like... It's not the worst. I could have added in the Witherbloom thing, but honestly, I think you're just not doing that that much, if ever, in in this type of deck with so much card draw. At no point in any of these games have I really wanted five mana to scry. Like that's basically what it is. Uh, 
This is playable. I'll keep it. We've got our turn three play, like... So far this set has seemed really slow. Um, but usually sets do seem slow at the beginning. And then they do tend to, like, ramp up pretty quickly. Uh, to where people figure out what the best aggro deck is in the format and uh, start drafting that more heavily. And then kind of these like early decks might get pushed out, but for now, they're they're kind of where you want to be. So we're up against another mirror match. Do we just go for the tempt on the his pledge mage? I feel like that could be game winning here. So I'm going to go for it while he's tapped out. It's just a straight two for one. It's a great card, and it's a sorcery. It's a sorcery that gets you a creature, which is very good in this format with Magecraft. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's awesome. That was really awesome. He said thanks back. Oh, that was awesome. I love that. Opponents are great. Let's see if he wants to trade. He does. That was really awesome. Good work, opponent. He's basically matching us out here. Well... We could Eureka and gain the life. I don't think we really need it. I kind of want to do this. Wow. Opponent is not afraid to uh, trade. Not afraid to trade. We got another one, baby. We got another one. We got another one. He's got some good stuff too. We're basically playing ourselves. Which is not too great here because let me tell you, I'm pretty good. I don't want to play against myself. Nice. We got the land. We got the land. And now we're gonna trick ya. Slap. He's got two of them? That's not fair. Man. He's got two of them. Wow, the chances of drawing two of the same rare are pretty low. Good for you, opponent. Good for you. If we attack here, do we get Pledge Mage? I'm fine. I'm fine with that. That thing's gonna grow too big. Oh, we get the Flyer and the Pledge Mage. Sweet. Two spiky boys out on the field, so opponent ain't attacking anytime soon. Simone's gonna start doing her thing. Yeah, that, that one hurts. Um, like it just gets him lands. I guess it thins his deck from lands, but. Yeah, that's a good one. Sweet. So, uh, let's go ahead and swing in, huh? He might let it through. Sweet. Come on, no bounce spells, no bounce spells, no bounce spells. Man, opponent is doing it. I don't know what to do here. 
He's got the removal. Oh no. Our greedy attack with the Drakes hurts us. Time for a Eureka moment. I mean, that was Dece. Uh, sure. We'll play the long game with opponent. We got our own Simone, you know? Let's go. Let's go. Who's got the better deck? So far, him. I think Pledge Mage is one of our only real outs here. I'm fine taking two. you want. Okay. So what do I even bounce? The pest? This is sorcery. Um, am I dead if he removes the pledge mage? No, but it's close. It's really close. Um, otherwise he just plays them again. The only thing I could really bounce is this two mana shit. Like, I guess I could bounce Simone to take him a turn off. I'm just gonna bounce the, the pest. And I guess get back my 5-5. Five five. No attacks. I'm definitely blocking Professor with the Pledge Mage. Okay, Bone's just going all out here. I don't even know. He's just he's just doing so much at this point, like what the hell? trading though. No, I'm probably not at this point. Like, do I go for the zone here? Or do I just need her as a blocker? I've got five life. two mana spells that are good? I still haven't played Quandrix Command, but that's three. Um, there's a fight spell. There's a fight spell. Uh, that's uh, pretty good here. So opponent's got, let's see, I, I block the 3-3, three, three. I block the 2-2 two, two forest, I block the 1-1 one one with the Simone, or I can block the 1-3 with Simone, or I can block their Simone. <sighs> We're just playing the freaking Pledge Mage, I guess. Like, if I had drawn the fight spell, yes. But I think the chance of that is pretty low. 
think maybe... Maybe I got too greedy with these death touchers. Like, maybe they're only really good for blocking at this point. What the heck? Man, this format is wild. Because it's got all these freaking Mystic Archives cards in it. He's about to play the top card of his library without paying it twice. And he got two good friggin' things. That's pretty sweet. Man, I wish I had bounced that. I didn't really have a choice, did I? Did I? Uh, like this. Uh, like this. And I'm not dead. Where am I dead? I think I am dead. So he didn't even have to do anything flashy. I was dead on board. So if I had mathed that out correctly, then um, I should have drawn and seen what I had gotten instead. Oh well. Live and learn. 5 and 3. I'm still happy with the deck. Definitely my introduction to Quandrix. Um, so far it seemed a bit more challenging to play than the Silver Quill version. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it. So if you made it to the end, thanks again. Uh, you probably like this, so go ahead and hit that thumbs up sub for the next one, and we'll see you later.